it's fall which means i have a very specific spooky reading list so that i can live in the atmospheric fall mood this entire fall so hello welcome back to my channel i'm going to talk about the books that i want to read this fall to create the perfect atmospheric spooky fall for myself in the past i never really tried to match everything that i was reading to my mood like quite so much as i'm going to attempt with this list here and i will say for myself it's like a loose tbr these are just some books that i'm interested in reading this fall but if i don't get to all of them there's always next fall um as soon as the weather started cooling down i'm like wow i'm over summer i just want to read everything atmospheric i feel like the whole summer maybe this is just me but i was really reaching for like those easy breezy beach reads that are like super quick to read a lot of romance there's a lot of rom-coms and then once the weather started getting cold i'm like it is time for my atmospheric reads and i was thinking like i would read all my thick chunky fantasy books fall well, that's not necessarily my like fall list i feel like after like the spooky spooky time of fall with halloween i will be transitioning into like reading more of my thick fantasy books over the winter i don't know maybe that's just me that like wants to read more kind of books in the winter <laughs> I don't know, let me know if I'm just being silly or if you feel the same way too. In the fall, I also tend to listen to quite a bit more audiobooks, especially because I've been, I like have this list of thrillers that I really want to get to and I love listening to them on audio. I think that they can be so atmospheric and creepy listening to it and like I get scared while I'm listening if I'm in my car or like on the train or something like that and I just love that experience, like absolutely love it. So I also, I have some physical books here that I want to read physically because obviously I own them and then I will also have a list of audiobooks, things that I have on hold for my library that I want to read via audio. The first book that I have here I'm so excited about, it's BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural 101 True Tales of Hauntings, Demons, and the Paranormal by Ryan Bergara and Jay Madej. I have been watching BuzzFeed Unsolved for years, probably since it first came out, and I was very sad when they ended it, but of course they're going to be continuing it just on their new channel. Um, but this is through BuzzFeed, and they basically like wrote up their experience of all the haunted places that they went. And as a diehard BuzzFeed Unsolved fan, I absolutely have to read this. So I think this is just gonna be one that I just pick up and browse, probably like leave it on my coffee table and read a story here or there throughout spooky season. And something about their videos in particular, just absolutely, I love watching them. I get so scared, but I love watching them. Uh, maybe because they kind of have the whole thing of like one person believes and one person doesn't believe so it feels very realistic I guess. If there is one thing that feels like fall to me it is a spooky atmospheric fairy tale. So if you didn't know in college I actually took a class on fairy tales. It was a writing seminar that all the freshmen had to take but you could choose the topic so I chose fairy tales. So we got to analyze all the fairy tales from like as soon as they had been recorded down through modern day and so i really have like an appreciation of the fairy tales and this book juniper and thorn by ava reed is based on the juniper tree by the grim brothers and i actually wrote an essay on that in college in this class so i'm very excited about this one it's actually been a while so i don't quite remember the twists and turns of the fairy tale but i remember just absolutely loving it and i'm so excited that it got like a modern day retelling in an adult fantasy book it's not too long which is great and i absolutely love the cover art and i've heard it can be quite gory um and i do know that there are quite a few trigger warnings so marlinchen and her two sisters are, are the daughters of the last wizard and her father keeps them locked up during the day and they basically have become a tourist attraction but at night marchinlin and her sisters sneak out into the city particularly the ballet theater where marchinlin meets a dancer who quickly captures her heart and while the city is thriving on the precip of industrialization there's a monster lurking in its midst born of the intolerance and resentment and suffused with old world power a gruesome curse a city in upheaval and a monster with an unquenchable appetite it just sounds so cool and like literally oh, i love fairy tale retellings the fall just seems like the perfect time for them and i'm really excited for this one because i have not seen a juniper tree retelling ever 
So now I'm gonna move into some thrillers. First we have The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins and this was sent to me by Penguin. So we have best friends Nina and Josie and they've always been outsiders at their high school and it's really sad because they're about to go away to college and be separated forever. So they go on one last three day hike in the woods. But simmering tensions lead them off the path and straight into a waking nightmare. I love like outdoorsy thrillers, creepy woods. They always scare me. I also know that this author has a thriller that was turned into a TV show, so I might also need to check that out. Here we have In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I've heard great, great things about this thriller and I love the cover. It is about six friends and one college reunion and one unsolved murder. Jessica Miller is returning to her college for her reunion and she wants everyone to know how well that she's doing after the murder of Hannah fractured her friend group. But not everyone has left and not anyone can let it go. And soon these six friends are trapped while someone tries to trap the real killer and make the guilty pay. So it has a bit of dark academia because it's set on a campus, um, as well as dual POVs, which I feel like that can work so well in thrillers. And I'm very excited for this. Next, I have another book by Ashley Winsett, which is her new book called The Last Housewife. While in college in New York, Shay Evans and her best friends got caught in a seductive man's web of lies. At the end of college, only her and her friend Laurel were the ones to escape. Eight years later, Shay is living a normal life in suburban Texas when she finds out from her favorite true crime podcast that Laurel is dead. So with the help of the podcaster, she goes on a mission to find the truth. She returns to where she swore she would never go again and she's pulled into a world of wealth and privilege and she becomes consumed with uncovering the truth. So I love this, it's like a cult, it has podcast elements, I think that the just the color and of this cover is pretty cool. It's all neon -y and yeah, I mean, I do have this one physically, but if it does have a podcast, I may try and look at the audiobook. If you've read this audiobook, let me know what you think. Okay, shifting gear a little bit, I now have a book that is a horror book and I love horror ever since I read um, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia and so when this book was compared to Mexican Gothic as one of its comp titles, the other one being Rebecca by Daphne du Maur, which is like a very very famous gothic horror novel which maybe on my list as well, I, maybe I'll just throw it on there um, if I can get an audiobook for it. But yeah, I have had my eye on this in the store and I went to Barnes & Noble and I'm like, I need to have it. And so I bought it. The Hacienda is set during the overthrow of the Mexican government. So I believe that, uh, yes, it starts in 1823. Beatrice's father is executed and her home is destroyed. So when this handsome man, Don Rodolfo Soloranzo, proposes to her, she ignores the rumors of the demise of his first wife and takes him up on the proposal and moves into his house. And so she will have her own home again, no matter the cost, and he has a comfy country estate. The Hacienda San Isidro is not the sanctuary she imagined. Also, I'm completely sorry if I'm butchering the accents. I am trying really hard because it took years of Spanish, <laughs> but I hope I'm not doing it badly. <laughs> Rodolfo returns to work in the capital and Beatrice feels like the house is always watching her. She has visions and voices in her sleep. Her sister-in-law thinks that she is being crazy, but then why won't she enter the house at night? And why does the cook burn incense? And what really happened to the first Doña Solorzanto? Beatrice only knows two things for certain. Something is wrong with the Hacienda and no one will save her. So it's like supernatural horror and I'm so excited to read this. It just seems so atmospheric and perfect for fall and seems really creepy and like it will keep me up at night, which is exactly what I want in a fall book. Switching gears from thrillers and horror, I have some gothic YA fantasies that I want to read. The first of which is Belladonna by Adeline Grace and I did pre-order it and got this really cool art print. So as you can see, it's very spooky ball vibes. And like when you take off the cover, so pretty. And then the end pages for this design and in the back it has these lovers in the woods. Perfect fall vibes. 
Cigna was orphaned as a baby and so she's been passed from relative to relative. Her remaining relatives are the Hawthorns that live in the Thorn Grove estate. When she shows up, she realizes that the father mourns his late wife by throwing wild parties. His son grapples for control of the family's reputation and his daughter is faced with the same illness that killed the mother. But when the mother's restless spirit returns and claims that she was poisoned. Cigna realizes that the family that she depends on could be in grave danger. Her best chance is to align herself with death. A fascinating, dangerous shadow that has never been far from her side. And yeah, so I think she's like the only one that can touch death. So, very gothic romance with death. These gothic kind of books, like that, this, yes, and the plants. The cover, they did such a great job on this cover. I absolutely love it. It's giving gothic fantasy romance, but it's also giving horror and I love that. Speaking of gothic fantasy romance horror, we have Forest Fall, which is the sequel to Lake's Edge by Lindell Clipstone. I read this one last year, loved it. We follow Leta and she basically goes to this spooky manor where the Owner of the estate is a 19 year old boy that is rumored to have drowned his entire family. And she soon realizes that the estate is visited by the Lord Under. And Rowan, the owner of the estate, is bound to him. Leta and her brother furiously work to unwind the curse, but will it be enough? So, Blake's Edge, literally haunted mansion, death, as character, very similar to Belladonna, but like, ugh. I love this and I'm very excited for the sequel Forest Fall and I want to know what happens next. I think it's a duology and it's just the, the back describes it as a shadow drenched fairy tale and I think that that is a perfect description. Would it be a fall reading list if I didn't include some vampires? Here I have Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Robert and this is a bind up of three books in one and it's a why choose romance involving vampires and Katie Robert just writes the spiciest spice and now we have a physical bind up of this wonderful series and so I will be reading it because I love her and vampires. Yes. And now we are moving to Dark Academia. I have Babel by Arv Kwong and the tagline I will read you is Traditore, traditore. An act of translation is always an act of betrayal. And so we follow Robin. He is half British, half Chinese. And he goes to Oxford to work in their translation secret society. And it's called, it's the Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel. And so this, there's this thing called silver working, which is the art of manifesting the meaning loss in translation using enchanted silver bars. And it's made a British and unparalleled power in the world. And it talks a lot about colonization and identity. And I actually went to the signing. So my book is signed and R.F. Pong is literally brilliant. I could listen to that woman speak all day about her experiences and her education and she's just super smart and this just seems like it's going to be the dark academia book that's going to kill me because it's going to make me emotional and put me in agony but I'm going to love every second of it. And I haven't read her Poppy War trilogy yet. I still need to do that. So this is a book that is out but I don't own it yet because it has not arrived in the mail. And that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. This is like her only thriller and it's super popular and I want to read it and see what all the hype is about. It's basically about this woman that gets hired to go and finish the novels of this woman named Verity that was like this famous author and is now mysteriously ill and goes and like lives in their house to finish the books and it's supposed to be super like people are like oh my god this book is like crazy so I'm excited to see what the hype is about and see if it lives up to my expectations. So yes, as you can see, I've been on a bit of a thriller suspense. Okay. The next book that I absolutely cannot wait for is the finale to the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. We have Kingdom of the Wicked, Kingdom of the Cursed, and Kingdom of the Feared. I am probably going to reread Kingdom of the Cursed. This was like one of my top books of last year. Like it was just, everything about it was amazing. Kingdom of the Wicked follows Amelia and her twin Victoria. They live in like 1800s Sicily and they are strege, aka witches. And basically one day Victoria shows up murdered in the local monastery. And Amelia will do anything to seek 
answers and vengeance for what happened to her twin, including summoning a demon, aka Wrath, one of the princes of hell. He says that he has the same motive to find out what happened to Victoria because she was lined up to be the wife of the devil and he has been tasked with finding that wife. And so he must find out what has happened to all of the candidates. But can you really trust a prince of hell? And this book. It got spicier, the setting just changed completely and it was amazing, but it ended on such a twist that made sense, but I did not see coming and I loved it so much. Like, I've already read this book twice, but like, I could read it a third time. I don't know. It would kind of be fun to like read the whole trilogy at once. I, as you can tell, this is one of my favorite trilogies, or at least the first two books are. I don't know. Well, we'll see how I'm feeling as it gets closer to September 27th, but anything Carrie Maniscalco has written, I will read it. I will read it. So another book that is not yet out that I'm so excited to get in is House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. I mean, this cover it's a perfect fall cover. It's so spooky. I want to read it so badly. Wanted. Blood made of exceptional taste. Must have a keen proclivity for life's finer pleasures. Girls of weak will need not apply. Marianne Shaw is drawn into the upper echelons of a society where blood is power and it is described as a dark and enthralling gothic novel. Yes. It's on the TBR. Marianne finds herself as a blood maid at the notorious House of Hunger. Countess Lisavette is the one that presides over this hedonistic court and is loved and feared in equal measure. She takes special interest in Marianne. But when her fellow blood maids begin to go missing in the night, Marianne is thrust into a vicious game of cat and mouse. Okay, so now onto audiobooks. So this first one is on my list, but I already read it, and it's The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I read this one end of August, and I feel like it was a great book for that transition time between summer and fall. And this is about a book club in the 90s, and there are these housewives in South Carolina, and they're reading like true crime slasher books and there is this new neighbor that seems like really suspicious and they think that he might be a vampire and it's up to the book club to save the rest of the town and it was so good it definitely delivered on its promises so the next audiobook that i started is the death of mrs westaway by ruth ware and we follow hal who's very down on her luck and she basically gets this letter in the mail saying like your grandmother died come get your long lost inheritance or whatever and she's like i know this isn't my grandmother but she can cold read people meaning that she does tarot for a living and she can basically know how to like interpret situations and manipulate people so she's like i'm gonna go get this money because she like owes debt to some dangerous people but once she gets there she realizes that things are really messed up in this family and definitely not what they seem so this is my first Ruth Ware. I know that she's a pretty popular thriller author and I'm really enjoying the audiobook so far. And then the next book that I want to read by Ruth Ware is Turn of the Key. I think that this one is really interesting. It is that it is told from the perspective of our main character writing to her lawyer from prison. She basically sees this ad for a live-in nanny and she goes and she lives in this smart home in the Scottish Highlands but with this picture perfect family, but it ends with the child dead and the nanny in jail. And so she like says that she is not guilty of this murder. And so we need to figure out what happens. I, again, I just really want to see a book that's told in this like letter style. I think that's really intriguing. And so I'm definitely probably gonna pick this one up next. So the next fall audiobooks that I want to read are Riley Sager. I literally put all of his books on hold at the library and whichever one comes through first will be the one that I read. So here's a picture of all of his books. Make of that what you will. I just know he's a really well-known thriller author and I want to get into him and I think audiobooks are the perfect way. Next is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. This one was recommended to me by some friends that have read her and they said it's good. So I put it on my list and it's about this woman that goes to Paris and has an apartment. Clearly I didn't read up the book description for this one. I just... <laughs> she goes to Paris and there's an apartment. Um, da, 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 da. The last book that I'm thinking of checking about on audiobook this fall is The Maidens by Alex Mikeldades. I think um, it's like a dark academia thriller and he got really famous for The Silent Patient which I may check out that one too but The Maidens like appeals to me more. I just like the meeting of dark academia and thriller suspense so hopefully that one's good. 
but yeah that is my list like i said it's not quite a tbr as much as a list of books that i'm interested in and i'm not holding myself to reading and it is in general just for the season of fall because i found i don't like making super strict tbrs because then it makes me feel bad when i don't meet them even though it is the most arbitrary thing in the world which as you notice that's probably why i've stopped posting tbr videos and kind of why i stopped making them and i just am reading what i feel like and it's great so let me know what you are planning on reading this fall, which book you think is the spookiest on this list, or if you have other spooky book recommendations that you think that I should check out. I'm always on the lookout for more like horror books and gothic romance, gothic scary, all of those kinds of things. So I hope that you guys enjoy. Please leave a little pumpkin emoji if you have watched this far and have some fun reads books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.